Hi, this is Bruce the Accounting Guy again, and we're working on merchandising company one more time. Last time we went over how a merchandising company records their sales. This time, let's record what would happen if we're a company on the other side, which means that we're now going to, what would we do, we do when, how would we record things when we're making our purchases? Now, we're still going to do the periodic inventory system, and we're still going to record the gross invoice way, which means we're not going to worry about if we take the discount or not initially. Now, if you remember last time, the only time we recorded the discount is if they take the discount. Otherwise, we record it for the full amount. And that's what we're really doing here. As you'll see, we're going to record the payable at the full amount, regardless if the company will take the discount. If they take the discount, we'll worry about it when they pay the discount. So let's take a look. Again, we have a company, and I'm really using the same set of numbers that we used when we recorded the sales. Now we have a company that's making that $3,800 worth of purchases. And they're going to make it on account. Again, that 210 net 30. They don't worry about the discount originally. They record the payable at the full amount. So when they record the payable, there it is, debiting merchandise inventory, putting it into their inventory, and, of course, crediting accounts payable. Okay, now again, I want you to remember that when terms are given to you, such as in this one, 210 net 30, you know that they are paying on account and that it's not cash because if we didn't, if we paid in cash, we wouldn't have those terms because the cash would have been paid right up front. So they now have inventory on their books of 3,800 and they have an accounts payable of 3,800. And again, in our example, if you rec remember, that this company decided that they wanted to return $300 worth of their goods. When they record theirs, we don't have as much because all they're going to do is take the same exact journal entry and we're going to reverse it. We're going to reverse it for the amount that they're returning, which is $300. And it's the same exact accounts again, but they're exactly the opposite of what we had above. We're now reducing our payables by $300. And we are, again, there's our credit. We indent the merchandise inventory for 300 And there's our, again, our explanation to record the return of goods purchased from PW Audio Supply. So, again, as you look at these two entries, they're exactly the same but the inverse because we're just reversing out our purchases. At this point in time, we'd only have an accounts payable of 3800 minus the 3 which means we only owe 3500 and now it's time to pay. Yeah. Okay, so... We have accounted for our purchase return and allowance. Before we go ahead and we make our payment, let's talk about costs that we incur to get the inventory to us. Uh, let's say, for example, as we have down here, that to get all this inventory to us, we incur $150 to get the inventory to us. That could be, that's freight cost. Sometimes it's called transportation in. Sometimes it's called freight in. In either case, it's the cost of getting the goods to us. What we do is if we incur those costs of $150, <clears throat> of course, we can debit ca credit cash credit cash for $150 to show the removal of it, but our debit goes to not a freight cost but to merchandise <clears throat> inventory. And so, therefore, we will put any kind of cost to incur goods, any cost that we incur to get the goods to us becomes a cost of our merchandise, and we always put it in the merchandise inventory. On the other hand, contrasting that would be freight out, transportation out. The cost of the goods that we sell to get them to our, our customers is not a cost of merchandise inventory, but an actual operating expense. So therefore, we can call it freight out. We can call it transportation out. We could call it just plain old delivery expense. And if we incurred $150 of that type of expense, of course, we would credit out the cash and the debit would go to an expense and not merchandise inventory. So we have two types of freight costs. The cost of getting the freight to us, that becomes a merchandise cost. And the cost of taking of freight, getting the goods to our customers, that is an actual delivery, some sort of delivery expense that we record. Now it's time to make our payment on these purchases we had up here. But these purchases, we do not owe $3,800. We owe $35 because of the fact that we debited accounts payable and then credited accounts payable. I mean, credited accounts payable initially and debited it when we actually made the return. If we come down here, I have a T account analysis for accounts payable. This is the way the accounts payable 
general ledger account would look at this point. There's the initial recording of the 3,800, but we remove 300 upon return, so we only owe 3,500. And when it comes time to report that discount, let's look back up here at the terms now. As we move all the way back up, remember that our terms were 210 net 30, which meant pay within 10 days of May 4th, and we can have the 2% discount. Don't pay, you don't get your discount, but still pay within 30. So we're going to take the 2% discount, but not on the full 38, because we don't owe 38, we only pay 35. Now the other thing I want to remind you is, is that a lot of times textbooks, they talk about taking discounts on a partial amount if paid still within the 10%. In real life, that's not going to happen. My customers would tell you that if somebody owes them $3,500, you can get the discount on the full 35, but if you only pay half, you're not getting the discount. The discount's only eligible if you're going to pay the amount in full. So, we're going to take 2% on 3,500. As we said earlier in the previous recording, it was $70. But we're still going to remove the whole 35. So when we come down to the entry to take a look at that, notice that there's the debit to accounts payable 35 to remove the full amount. And now we owe nothing, but when we make a credit to cash, it's only 3430 And that's because of the fact that we satisfied that discount. Now, we still have $70 that we have to make as a credit to this entry to make the entry equal. And really what, in essence, think about what we've done is we have recorded, uh, we've only paid $3,430 for all this inventory, not the $3,500 because we got a $70 discount. So notice what we credit merchandise inventory. By crediting the merchandise inventory for the $70 savings, we've now reduced our inventory that we originally recorded by 70 bucks and it really reflects what we've recorded. Now, if we did not, or I should say what we paid, if we did not take the discount, then we would have paid, still removed the whole 3,500, but we would have paid cash of 3,500 in this entry below reflects a June 3rd payment instead because of the fact that we made that payment not within the discount period. So that's how we record entries for the person, person making the purchases. I want to come back over to the income statement and review it a little farther down and take off where we did from the gross profit. Again, up here we're recording our sales and what it cost us for the goods and that this was our markup, but we have other expenses that we also incur <clears throat> during the course of operations. We have two types of operating expenses. They're selling and administrative, and if you look closely at the chart and in your book, you'll see that they're broken out somewhat in more detail. And we can have, we can have quite a number of different items. We just don't want to make it too lengthy in, in this example. But as you can see, we can have quite a number of different selling administrative expenses. We pull them over one column to show the detail we total them out. We total the two types of selling of, of the expenses we have for operations, selling and admin. Bring over that total and subtract it from our markup, and we have our total uh, income from operations. Now, a company also has other revenues and, uh, and other um, expenses or really other income and other expenses that they can occur in their day-to-day -day operations that don't directly have to do with the operation itself, and we, we call those indirect activities, and usually we show them as other revenues and gains and other expenses and losses. If you come down and look at the types of things we have, you can see that a company could get rid of some of their equipment and sell their equipment for a gain, or they could easily put it down here and sell it for a loss. That, that equipment, does that, that, that revenue, that, that loss that they would incur doesn't really have to do with their day-to-day -day operations, and we break them out. The reason that we break out these activities down here that don't have to do with the actual operations of the company is to make to the external users of this financial statement, we're adding clarity for them as to where all the dollars are actually going so that they can decide again what they think would be here next year if they're trying to decide, well, I'm going to make a loan to this company. I need to take a good look at their operations. I see that this is what they're making on their operations, but they have other items that occur that may not be there next year. Like here's a casualty loss from vandalism. They lost $200 for something vandalized. It doesn't mean that's going to happen every year, but they know that up here we're still going to have our selling and our administrative expenses. Maybe they sell a piece of land down here and have a gain of a million dollars 
that million dollars is going to increase this net income number by a million bucks, but it doesn't mean that company is going to be as successful in the next year because that gain on that piece of land was the only piece of land they had. So if I'm somebody looking at that company and trying to decide if I'm going to loan them money, I'm more interested in these numbers. What are their numbers actually from their, from their operations, not from these activities which are considered peripheral to the actual business? And that's the income statement. And that's all for today. And this is Bruce, the accounting guy, saying, see you later. Bye.